how they uh, conducted business with each other. And that most importantly, I think from the reason for why the Fed balance sheet is as big as it is, um, is that they were allowed to fund their balance sheet by going directly to one another. And that just didn't include um, full-on American banks. Obviously, it included banks, um, uh, European banks that had an American banking license and could participate in that market. And obviously, that was a big problem uh, in the GFC because when things started to go south, um, when you had uh, commercial paper that was um, under threat of not being able to be rolled because the underlying collateral was falling in value, um, uh, it spread this financial contagion all the way around the world. And it's basically the reason for why the GFC occurred. I mean, underlying that was that the collateral wasn't worth as much as what people thought it was. And personally, I, I look at the ratings agencies more so than anyone else on that, because um, they ended up rating, uh, especially what were meant to be diversified securitization. And government is a lot easier to project. You don't know what private sector credit is going to do. Uh, you've got some indicators that can tell you that, like the senior loan, um, uh, senior loan officer survey, um, which uh, sort of talks about how likely banks are to lend at any given point in time. Uh, that lines up quite nicely with with expansion and contraction in in private debt. We've seen that roll over, so you can probably factor in some growth in private sector debt, but. The big story here is you look at the CBO's projections for for the size of the deficit over the last five years, and it's pretty certain that um, you're going to be increasing the debt load by quite a lot. And the second, uh, what follows from that is the level of interest rates. Well, what happens? I mean, if um, if interest rates are higher than where they are now, then interest payments should be higher on the existing stock of debt eventually. Um, but it's interesting to know well what ha actually happens to the deficit. Will the primary deficit sh shrink to account for more interest payments? If it does, then there's no effect on uh, on growth. And if anything, it should be less because uh, bondholders getting interest payments have, have a smaller propensity to spend than people getting direct checks, right? But in reality, I think that's not going to happen. I think the primary deficit will be the primary deficit. Um, you know, it's hard to shift that in this political environment. And that means the total deficit will end up, um, including interest payments, will end up increasing. So that should be more stimulatory than, than otherwise um, from that point of view. So, you know, when you put those factors together and assuming these relationships still hold with the amount of debt, the amount of debt growth and um, growth like it's happened in the past and GDP growth like it's happened in the past, then um, it puts a floor a very strong floor on growth. And I said in that article, I think five to five and a half percent nominal growth. So that could be, I don't know how it's split between inflation and real. It doesn't really matter. But now if you, if the Fed does start cutting, um, then you should see private sector credit increase as well. And that, that could mean that it's higher than that. And that's very high. Like 6% nominal GDP is much higher than it's been since the GFC. I think you need to go back to the early 2000s. So you, you sort of saw those, um, GDP figures um, consistently at that level. Um, so it's really, really important. And knowing what's happening with debt, knowing the effect of debt uh, and understanding how fast it's growing and it's affecting the economy is right now more important than following the line. All of us, I think is deeply rooted in today's uh, decision-making in terms of investments. And I think that's a huge mistake, but that is a direct consequence 
of what you stated about central banks intervening with greater force, you kind of change people's or numb people's uh, appetite towards risk. Um, you have any comments on that? Yeah, well, I mean, they're just adjusting to incentives, aren't they? Uh, that's it, it's been a it's been a working um, you know buy the dip obviously is a is a meme because it's been a working strategy, and I, I don't think I mean personally I don't think QE does a whole lot. Um, I I think the the bigger um, effect there has been that the government will come in and increase debt in some form or another to be able to save this or take take some of the risk of the private sector onto its own balance sheet. I think that has a more real effect. I mean, it's what got us out of the GFC. Um, to their credit, though, post GFC, I mean, uh, the government, apart from the, the obviously the stimulus in the GFC itself and slightly after, um, it was all switched off quite quickly. And you saw a pretty big deleveraging in the private sector for a good five odd years. It really didn't stop until 2014 or so. And you can see it in the GDP numbers. Um, in the US, uh, consumer spending or consumer spending co contribution to the GDP growth was far lower than it was over the last 40 years. And that's because everyone was de uh, deleveraging at that point. The government took some of it on its own balance sheet, but it m mostly allowed the economy to work it out. I, I think you, I, I don't think you can be too harsh on, on the recovery from, from that point. The issue is after that point. Um, from 2016 onwards, it's basically been hell for leather in terms of uh, expanding the deficit, um, expanding the amount of debt, and obviously the pandemic was just the next level of that incredible, where you've you've entirely suppressed the supply side, but kept the demand side buoyant by um, through exactly. stimulus. They had to all of a sudden um, be able to buy enough paper to fulfil all of their depositors within it, within the MMF structures. Um, and there wasn't enough. There was too much of a call for um, highly rated government paper after the GFC. Um, so again, the Fed had to step in and provide those facilities for uh, money market funds to be able to invest in. And that's that one change alone, leaving aside everything else, um, basically pinned the Fed to running a very large balance sheet um, because of the requirements. And they've essentially just stepped in the middle um, where banks would be able to just deal with these funding issues between them. Now the Fed has to sit in between and that forces it to run a very large balance sheet. I mean, that explains a lot of it. It explains why uh, there's such demand for large reserves. And then it explains why they had to uh, start paying interest on reserve balances because these reserve assets on the bank balance sheets were so large um, and they were creating a hole in the balance sheet in terms of earnings. So they had to pay that. And then that created a whole bunch of other incentives. And then that those changes and those regulations ended up causing the small banking crisis. Uh, and that only came about because of the huge amount of issuance um, after the pandemic. Uh, it created a whole bunch of deposits. And because of all those deposits, they unfairly ended up on small back bank balance sheets where um, their holding of government assets ended up being a very large proportion of their balance sheets relative to the large banks who could handle a smaller uh, amount of exposure in that uh, in government securities a lot better than the small banks did. So, you know, you can have a look at all of these occurrences and that, that obviously caused the BTFP to come about um, because they, the Fed needed a way to be able to hike rates but simultaneously not bankrupt the entire small banking system in the, in the US, which is running at, you know, roughly a third of, of total deposits. Um, and I think that's the overarching theme, the fact that it, the details matter in terms of each of these new uh, facilities, the details matter in terms of what's happening to repo markets because of these changes. That all is important, but it all pales in significance to the new role that the Fed has taken um, in the, well, what's now 13, 14 years since the GFC. And there's no that changing at this point because um, 
your foot on the show I'm dancing on the table Spin out my sink I 